One of the most tried and proven methods of catching trout in mountain streams is spinning. But what is spinning? Spinning is the use of an artificial lure known as a spinner. It's got a little blade that spins around a body and the trout just commit suicide. They come after it and they hook up. Today I'm going spinning in this river. Let's go and see if we can catch some trout. And I'm gonna give you a few pointers as I go. So let's go. One of the things I love about this side of fishing is you can make big long casts like that. When you hook fish a long way away like that, quite often they jump out of the water and dance around. Got him, like that. Just on, right on cue. <laughs> right on cue. I just finished saying how they jump out of the water if you hook them a fair way out. A lovely rainbow trout. Come here, buddy. Come here, mate. You're a ripper. Right on. What a lovely trout. Here's a beauty. Here's a really nice rainbow of around, I don't know, 32, 31 centimetres. Low 30s anyway. Whoops, say buddy. I just finished saying, let him swim up through there, wow. I just finished saying that one of the things I love the most about this sort of fishing is that if you hook a fish way up there on a long cast, quite often they'll jump around and dance around and then that's exactly what he done. <laughs> now the spinner that I'm using today is this number one Super Vibrax. It's a gold Super Vibrax with a gold blade. This is one of my favourite spinners. There's another one you can get called a Warden's Rooster Tail and that also is a great trout spinner. But today I've started off with the gold Super Vibrax. Oh, little one following it. Oh, he followed it all the way in. I can still see him. Tiny little trout fly that in then. But he didn't hit it. Here comes another one. Another follow. Take it. But he's still following it. And one of the unfortunate things about spinners is that they're not natural looking. If you put on something like a, a soft plastic or even a fly, if you're a fly fisherman, you're more inclined to hook these wary trout. Whereas a spinner, because it's not so natural looking, they can be a little bit less inclined to strike at it. Here comes one. Oh, it's a bigger one. Take it. Got him. Yes. Oh, it's a lovely brownie, is it? Oh, look at him go. <laughs> wow. A lovely brown trout. He came out of that faster water up there. Come here, buddy. How exciting. Gee, I've missed this. I used to fish these bigger rivers a lot years ago, but I don't fish them all that often these days because there's not as many good ones around as there used to be. Have a look at that. What an absolute ripper. I might put him back in the water and risk him getting off. If he gets off, it doesn't matter because I might dig my, uh, my camera on my phone out of my bag and get a photo because he's a ripper. Hey mate, look at that, absolute ripper. There you go, buddy. There he goes, look at that. You little beauty. It's funny, I got out of the car and I thought, I wonder if there's any trout in here. And I walked down, made a cast without filming, caught a nice rainbow. I thought, hello. Made another cast, caught another rainbow. And I thought, I better get me camera gear out of the car and get going. <laughs> this spot will do. <laughs> I'm having an absolute blast. I haven't done this type of fishing for quite a while. I'm loving it. There's a few pros and cons to spinning. Spinning, in my opinion, is the easiest way to catch trout. You cast it out, and you reel it in, and if the fish is up to it, he commits suicide, he grabs your spinner. But the downside to that is spinners don't, well I don't think, they entice the bigger fish to strike as, as, as well as a more natural presentation, such as a soft plastic or a fly. The little strike tiger nymphs that I use, they're, they're a lot more natural, and therefore the bigger fish are more likely to hit them, 
but they're probably not as easy to fish as a spinner because with a spinner it's cast it out and reel it in in a straight line with the nymph i like to move it around a little bit so the upside to the spinner is that they're easier to fish and they're probably the easiest way to catch trout in these sort of waterways the downside is that they're not overly natural looking and they can take a little bit uh, they can be a bit they're not as good as at, at fooling the bigger trout. I know I caught that nice trout just before, but they're not as good on the whole of, of, at fooling the bigger trout as what a more natural presentation is. Just look at that, what, a, what an amazing place. Absolutely gorgeous place. Oh, got him. He, he took it at the last minute. I just saw, I thought, there's a shadow just come down after my spinner. How am I gonna wet my hand from up here on this rock? Oh, get down on my knees. Oh, come on buddy, nice little brownie. I saw a shadow come down there behind my spinner. Nice little brownie. See ya buddy. He's as happy as 10 trout. <laughs> Having a blast. I've forgotten how much fun it is to walk up and just spin in these bigger rivers. Now here's a couple of tips for this sort of fishing. Let's let's talk about reading the water. Where I am now, you will find trout anywhere. I like the deeper side. From here, I can see there's a bit of a deep channel running along there, as opposed to the shallow water over here. The fish will definitely sit in the shallow water, but I like the deeper side. And it's find the fish feel a bit safer if they're a little bit deeper. And as I look up there, I can see that's the main flow of the water, and there's a bit of depth around there. So I always like to find the deeper side, but I will cast into the other side as well. I also like to look for tussocks. See these tussocks? Because grasshoppers and a lot of other in insects live in these tussocks, and a lot of the aquatic nymphs and stuff will climb up the side of these tussocks and hatch. So tussocks can be a real hot spot for trout. The deep sides, tussocks, trees that overhang the river. There's a couple here, but there's nothing sort of too fancy. But sometimes if you've got a low overhanging tree, they can be really good spots because insects can fall out of those trees and into the water. And if you're new to fishing or you haven't seen any of my other videos, the golden rule to trout fishing is always uh, walk facing upstream. Now, I know in some of the really wide rivers and rivers that have got a lot of trout in them, you can walk downstream and your disturbance will uh, spook, like shake up the nymphs and stuff and wash them down and get the fish feeding. So walking downstream can be quite beneficial. But in a stream this size, this size or smaller, by walking downstream, all you're gonna do is spook all the fish. So if you wanna walk downstream and fish, you're better off to do it in the really big wide rivers, usually found in New Zealand and not Australia. <laughs> so here, in these sort of waterways, you're better off to walk upstream, cast ahead of yourself, bring the lure back down past the trout and recognize the hot spots, the deeper sides of the water. When the river's low, you'll see bubble lines where the bubbles sort of all pool up and run along a straight line. Bubble lines are a hot spot. Tussocks and overhanging vegetation and shade. If there's a bit of shade on the water, if it's a sunny day and there's trees casting shadows on one side, that shaded side nine times out of ten will be the side to fish. That's a little bit gross. Look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him, he's, he's quite a big fish. He wasn't a bad fish, he would have probably been the second biggest today if I'd caught him. Wasn't as big as that big brownie I got earlier, but still a nice fish all the same. That goes back to what I said earlier about the, uh, the bigger fish can just be a little bit shy around spinners. If I'd been using something more natural, I might have caught that fish. Another tip when you're fishing in really clear streams like this, fish from well back. I've said that a lot in a lot of my videos, but fish from as far back as you can. The more I walk up towards that water, the more likely I'm going to be to scare the fish. And if possible, fish from the shade. If half this rock, uh, rock bar here is in the sun and half's in the shade, I should be standing in the shade. Unfortunately, at the moment, the whole thing is pretty much in the sun. But where possible, stand in the shade when you cast. That will eliminate things that shine and reflect, even like metallic parts of your reel that the fish will, uh, the fish will see. So stand well back, and if possible, stand in the shade. Right, yeah, folks, that's it from me. I've got a long walk back to the car. Most of the action came in the first 30 to 45 minutes, and the last hour and a half's actually been very slow. But I've had an absolute blast walking up this, this larger waterway. Now, if you want to do this sort of thing, 
a Super Vibrax in number one colour or a Warden's Rooster Tail is just as good. You can't go wrong with those spinners. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked this video, why not consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.